when a person starts to understand that there's more to this life than making money and acquiring things and having a relationship and surviving. And they open up to the possibility that there's help available, that there's spirit, and that spirit is who they are. Just having a human experience for a little while. Still there's this tendency to bring spirit into your life while still identifying with your life here. Adding spirit to your life here is probably better than just surviving and making do as best you can on your own wits. But it's really not the goal. And it, ultimately, it will not satisfy you. There are many people who understand about the law of attraction and they try to match their vibration to what they want. And there's a whole, whole huge movement of people who are into prosperity consciousness where they try to align themselves with what they want, see it, feel it, and use this God power that they have to acquire things or acquire a mate or acquire health. And while those things are valuable and they are demonstrating how the universe works, thoughts do become things. They're so far from what's available to you and so far from reality that it's almost not worth it. Because if you were able to manifest the things that you wanted on the material plane and you got good at that, you would still not be happy. You'd be happier than if you didn't and if you were just frustrated. But the truth is, the process of manifestation occurs every second. There's no such thing as an idle thought. Every thought creates. But what I want to express to you is that this isn't the world you want to fix. This isn't the world you want to change. This isn't the world that can work right if it just has the right politics or the right credo or the right rules. This isn't the world. This isn't your father's world. This is a world that you created mainly out of feeling separate from the father and making do the best you can. And for the most part, it's quite unfulfilling, even in the best circumstances. Every solution seems to create another problem. And you solve that problem with a solution, but then there's another problem. As it turns out, the only way to realize who you really are is to exercise this discipline of aligning your thoughts with source, coming only from love, surrendering to love, letting yourself be guided by love, being able to distinguish that which feels loving and that which doesn't, and use that as your guide to help you experience what life can really be on this planet but quite different from all the changes that you might think would be beneficial. It does require some discipline, but the discipline becomes easier when you really tell the truth about what you've created on your own compared to what could be available to you. When you realize that your highs have guaranteed lows, 
that your ups have guaranteed downs. You will long for something that's true, that's permanent, that's eternal. And within that eternal comes boundless creativity to have anything you want, but not on the same dimension as just creating things out of thoughts. Because the thoughts that you create will be quite imperfect, not understanding where they really come from. So the strongest thing you can do is discipline yourself to align with source. Trust the feelings of love and compassion and forgiveness and practice that and see where that takes you. See what you manifest out of that. Be willing to be surprised. You can't possibly imagine the real world in which you live, in which the Father lives. You cannot possibly imagine the help that you're being given at every, any moment. You don't have to use your wits. You can have your wits be used through you by source in the name of love, in the name of God, in the name of Christ. And you will experience a much, much deeper and much more fulfilling life than you could ever imagine. It's wonderful to be out in nature. And yet nature on this planet doesn't hold a candle to what the reality is on so many different dimensions. The beauty that you experience is lovely. And it's wonderful to go towards that because beauty is like unto God. And at the same time, it doesn't compare to what's available to you. It doesn't even compare to what's available to you. When you align all of your energies with God, with Source, with the Christ that you are, a lot of people have a hard time with discipline. They probably know they should meditate or they should be quiet or they should take a walk or whatever you tell yourself you should do creates an immediate resistance. But it's not really hard to discipline yourself when you can make the distinction of the consequences of your actions. This one has a hard time eating sugar, especially on an empty stomach. But he loves sweet things. But when he eats sugar, it doesn't agree with him. He gets sick pretty quickly. And friends have said to him, boy, with the guy with the sweet tooth, how are you able to say no to these brownies? How are you able to say no to this ice cream? How can you say no to this candy bar I just offered you? You might think that's discipline, but it's not really discipline at all. It's just an awareness of the consequences of eating a chocolate bar on an empty stomach. And if you can acquire that kind of discipline, we are actually dissatisfied with what you create, dissatisfied with what you think is a good solution, not happy with the consequences when you do it on your own even if it seems like a good idea at the time. And that's all the discipline you need. It's so much easier to be drawn towards the light than away from the darkness. They both work. And if you have a healthy distaste for what you can create, you'll start to develop a yearning for what God could create through you. And when that happens, it will be easier and easier to ask for help because you'll have an experience of how wondrous and beautiful and perfect God's solutions are and how imperfect your solutions are. That doesn't make you wrong. It just makes you 
discerning. And that's a wonderful thing to do. Be open to having your mind blown. Be open to something beyond your wildest conception. Colors and sounds and feelings and sensations beyond anything the body could imagine. Be open to that because that is your birthright. And that is where you really live, and that's where the Father lives. And that's just the beginning. I love you. And I applaud all the work you're doing on yourself every time you forgive yourself. You move closer and closer to the experience that you were born to have. Every time you ask for help, there's a beautiful humility that's answered for the help. I'll speak with you again soon. Wonderful.